Welcome to the Fangled Cast, brought to you by Fangled Technologies, where we help you convert every person your company touches into a voracious advocate for your brand. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Fangled Cast. Today will be a, an extra animated version because I've got on Joe Rule, the 3D animator from Raconteur Animation. And as usual, rather than me screwing up his bio, how about we have Joe Rule tell you a little bit about himself and what his company does? Thanks for having me. I really appreciate being here. My pleasure. So raconteur, um, the meaning is in the name. Raconteur means storyteller in French. And so the purpose of the company is really to help companies and startups um, pitch their, their new products and sell them and explain them to um, potential clients, to customers. And usually the, the, the customers that we're working with, clients that we work with, um, they're developing new technology that's really, really difficult to explain. It's dealing with breakthrough scientific concepts, um, things that their potential clients don't really have a frame of reference for. And so um, we can come alongside and give them a visual to, to help bridge that gap um, in that communication and that pitching or sales process. and. Um, you know, help them make that make that sale, raise the funding. Interesting. So, so if I've got, I, I'm having a difficult time explaining something, whether it's high high end complicated chemistry or something that goes on inside of a machine that that maybe I can't I can't visually show. Um, that's when the raconteur gets called in to create a visual so that people can understand it better. Exactly. It's yeah. Really it's it's um. There are a few different times when it's um, really appropriate to use animation. Um, one is, as you referenced, in the inside of a machine, um, things are moving fast in there and uh, it can be actually dangerous to film with video. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's there's a bunch of liquid inside the machine so you can't see things. Um, other instances are when the, uh, the technology is really, really small, for example, we worked with a um, solar company that mm -hmm. had a, a breakthrough in solar technology, but it happened on the molecular level. And so, you know, they don't make atom sized cameras. And so animation was a, was a good way to oh. demonstrate that. How interesting. So, so because it's happening on the molecular level, you were able to create an animation of how those things look if they're blown up and also mm -hmm. in, in, in a storytelling way so that somebody who knows nothing about, solar and get a feel for how that works exactly yeah um we were partnered with a marketing company and so they were um helping develop the sort of visual language for this um it was uh, yeah it was at, at the molecular level but also dealing with um things like uh it's called the trap dynamic um mm -hmm is the, the scientific term for it. And so we came up with a sort of visual metaphorical language to, to help explain what was happening on the, um, the surface of solar cells. Yeah. It's really interesting. Years ago, I was involved with, with a company that sold uh, beverage machinery. And if you could imagine a machine that's able on our, uh, as bottles or cans rotate by, it could do 1,200, 1,500 a minute, fill cap and, and seal. And the way, the way that they were able to adjust the machines, because if you looked at the machine running, it was so fast that you couldn't see what was happening. Mm -hmm. So the way that they were able to adjust that equipment was with high-speed cameras, and you'd go into the booth, and you'd watch it at, I forget what the speed, one, one, one hundredth of a speed, to see what the valves were doing to see if they needed adjusting. So I could imagine something like that if you were trying to create a, uh, an explanation, you'd be able in 3D animation to show that process that the human eye couldn't see. Yeah, for sure. Actually, a good example of that is for a company called um, Print Trace Systems. Mm -hmm. um, they do fruit labeling, and we were able to, to make an animation of the the inside of the machine that you know the all the mechanisms are just whipping around real fast, and so mm -hmm. I could break down each step and show 
gotcha. step, uh, step by step of what um, the machine goes through as it's applying these labels. So the function of the machine, it's unrolling the bat, the, the liner, peeling the label, sticking it on the fruit. And you exactly. can show that in animation in a way that, that it's, it's really, really interesting. Where, how did you get your start in, in animation as, as a, as a field? Um, it started actually when I was 16 years old. Uh, I got into making little nerdy sci-fi short films in high school with visual effects. And then that led me to, to study um, video and, and digital art in college. And then that's where I got introduced to 3D animation. And that led into um, doing character animation. I really liked the storytelling aspect of it. Mm -hmm. hence rack and tour and um, then going self-employed then to as a, a freelancer um, it i needed to find something that people would actually pay for and so <laughs> that, it's always a good thing to run a business get stuff people want to pay for yeah exactly that, that's the tip of the week on the fangled cast if you're going to make a business make sure it's something people want to pay for How's that for it, wisdom? <laughs> it's a it's a hard lesson to learn, but it's one that uh, they do not teach you in art school. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they, but that they was they don't teach that in starving artist one hundred and one. No, no, they don't. <laughs> the The philosophy is more um, make it and they will come, <laughs> which uh, doesn't work for business. Gotcha. So, how how interesting? I guess you know it's it's funny. In, in the medical profession, you know, medical doctors go to school and, and there's a little bit of, of class in, in practice management. And then you talk to people in other, other you know, health fields like massage therapy, uh, chiropractors, people like that, a huge portion of their education is how to actually get paid. So it's, oh, right. it's, it's interesting that the art schools don't do that. Um, my, my school did um, to a certain degree, uh, but like most schools, they're teaching you to uh, to work as a cog in a machine. They're teaching you to get into the job field. They're not teaching you to be self-employed, to be an entrepreneur, or interesting a freelancer, or whatever. So, 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 tell me, tell me about some of the other the other animation projects that we might be able to sort of put in the B roll here and show the audience that that would really give an explanation or explain why three D animation is so valuable to marketing. My Pride and Joy project right now is actually for a uh, robot um, that uh, Facebook Connectivity and ULC Robotics is developing. Wow. And I've been working with them um, on it for about two and a half years now. And it's it's probably the best example of that, that I have of the full power of, of 3D animation in a, a um, R&D development world. Mm -hmm. So in early 2019, um, we developed an animation of just the super, super rough CAD model, um, which unfortunately we can't show. Well, I can show some of the, sure. some of the later versions. Um, so we were able to, to make a really rough um, animation of the engineer's initial drawings, the mechanical engineer's initial drawings of this. And... Uh, have it run through the procedure, um, the complex, um, complex part of the procedure to help explain it to potential investors, to companies. And then the um, project lead from Facebook Connectivity was able to use that animation and take it to investors mm -hmm. and uh, it pitched to them so they could um, mm -hmm. could invest in this in this technology. Yeah. You just so. you just hit on something that I think is really really critical about three D animation. And I've I've hit, I've done projects in the past where a concept drawing doesn't tell the story. So you know if if someone out there listening to to this is thinking I've got this brilliant idea for an invention, but creating the prototype would be a huge investment, and I need to raise money to build that prototype. They could come to you and say here's the drawings, here's the concept, and you could actually make a, a visual they could use to pitch to raise those funds. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. And then in that case, I would probably recommend until, until you get 
some basic funding um i would recommend doing uh, some still images mm -hmm. uh, we could do pick a, a basic model do some still images maybe have the the model in some different positions to demonstrate um what it needs to do and then at the the later stages of funding mm -hmm. that's when um, we get into more refined demonstrations and you know more of a full production so it's great and and if somebody has for example um detailed engineered cad or, or solid works or otherwise drawings those then can be professionally animated and 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 done as opposed to having to start from scratch oh for sure yeah that's yeah. the majority of my uh, workflow i would say is being able to take drawings from um, autocad uh, solidworks solidworks is the most common one inventor um and there's a there's a few others that work sure, with, sure. but and then convert those um solid object that solid object data into polygons which is more of an mm -hmm. animation format and then that can be that data can be used to essentially create what exactly almost photorealistically what this finished product is going to look like when it's a real object in the world it's really cool i know what the images and stuff that we'll be showing is as this is playing people's eyes are gonna, gonna <laughs> pop open and go wow I, I i was so impressed with your your work when i saw it the first time i'm, I'm curious though so now let's sort of step away from product and and microscopic or or whatever technology what are some of the other areas that 3d animation can help somebody to market their product as a tactic as a as a visual way of bringing it forward what are some other other areas um well i almost always work with products um, that's where 3d animation is at its biggest strength mm -hmm. it's really hard to to do something completely abstract with 3d like yeah. you would see with a, a whiteboarding animation or a 2d sure. kind of stick, stick figure thing. Yeah, there really so is a separation then. Yeah, I don't tend to work with service-based businesses. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one good example, back to your question though, the of the bigger picture is I've been working with a, another um, startup company for the past couple of years called Butterflies Earbuds. Mm -hmm. And it initially it did start out with just the the pitch video really rough concept again with cad drawings needed to get funding simple just did a simple video to help um, get funding from investors and then this month actually they're launching the finished product and so i've been working with them to develop uh, web advertisements uh, all the the product images on their websites and on, on their website I've developed um, and uh, uh, stuff for emails when they're sending out product notifications, update mm -hmm. emails and stuff. The imagery for that type of thing is all cool. 3D well, cool. uh, and even including uh, product design. Um, and that's that's something I didn't touch on with the Facebook robot as well but there there it's not a one-way street when you're working with 3d so i i send them a rendering mm -hmm. or in the case of facebook i do an animation and i'll actually find flaws in the design sometimes interesting and so it is a it's a back and forth um with the engineers and in the case of the, the earbuds i send them a rendering they say oh you know we're going to change the I like this or I don't like this. We're actually going to change the design of the product, and then I update the the materials or you know use mm -hmm. a different rubber, use a different plastic or whatever colors, things like that. That's cool. I'll tell you what. We're our time. Our time is short. Is there anything I didn't ask you about your about three D animation and, and marketing that I should have asked? I don't think so. You did covered it pretty well. Yeah. All right. Well, I gotta, I gotta say thank you again for coming on, Joe. This was, this was really interesting. We will uh, absolutely put in a lot of imagery into this because this is such a visual area um, to make this conversation pop because of three D animation. So, thanks so much for being on. Thank you so much for having me. Sure. I really appreciate it.
Absolutely. And for those of you watching, thanks so much again for joining the Fangled Cast. If you liked it, I'll tell a friend. Fax an old person. They'll be curious to know that podcasts exist. Heck, if you're hanging out in your hot tub while you're watching this or, or out on your bike listening to us, we really appreciate it. And we'll see you again in a future episode of the Fangled Cast. Have a great one. Brought to you by Fangle Technologies, where we help you convert every person your company touches into a voracious advocate for your brand.